There was an idea to, eh, you know what, let's just have Nick explain it. And hey, it was a pretty good idea, on paper at least. Gather a genius billionaire playboy philanthropist with an army of robot suits, a magical space god, an all-American Superman, a big green monster, and a legendary spy, and get them to work together and, uh, you know, save the Earth. In practice, well, let's just say the results have been uh, variable. They've been variable. In this video, we're going to be looking at a bunch of the Avengers' best laid plans, some of them huge successes, and some of them... Well, you'll see. Avengers, assemble. The first Avengers movie showed us that under extreme circumstances, like say, for example, a mad god leading an alien army to destroy the Earth, these mighty heroes could work together. But that didn't necessarily mean they could do it again. So the opening of Age of Ultron was a big reassurance that such powerful personalities were capable of acting as a solid unit. Following the revelation in Captain America the Winter Soldier that Hydra had infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., naturally there was going to be a lot of work to do to clean up that mess, and the Avengers put together a pretty good plan to do it. Working as a united force, they were able to systematically track down and destroy Hydra's bases, eventually cornering Baron Von Strucker, defeating him, and retrieving Loki's scepter. That's the power of teamwork! Of course, a whole movie of Avengers successfully carrying out missions with no conflict or mistakes would have got pretty boring. So naturally, there are some bad plans to choose from in Age of Ultron. First and foremost, the Ultron program itself. Come on, Tony and Bruce, you smart guys. Of course, we can understand why you would want to create an AI system that can protect the world, but the world is a big place. Too big, perhaps, even for heroes as powerful as the Avengers. No wonder Bruce was hesitant. I don't understand. You built this program. Why is it trying to kill us? Surely these geniuses could have calculated the million ways it could have gone wrong. You better give up, Jimmy. We're dealing with a couple geniuses here. Here's three we could pluck out of the air. Uh, the fracturing of trust among the Avengers, the creation of a malevolent super robot jonesing for the end of the world, uh, the destruction of an entire country. In Tony's own words, not a great plan. And while we're talking plans in Age of Ultron, here's one that, on paper, was very, very bad. Tony has literally just created a super AI that turned out to be evil, and he decides that in order to solve that problem, he's going to, uh, sorry, let, let me check my, my notes here, uh, create another super AI. And this guy's supposed to be a genius. All right. Not only were there many, many variables and many, many ways that this could have backfired, it also managed to further piss off Tony's already very pissed off team. Leave it to the God of Thunder to break the ice. Of course, the Vision turned out to be a good guy, as proved by the fantastic moment with Thor's hammer and the day was eventually saved. But let's be honest, this was pure luck. Now let's rewind to the first Avengers movie. There were, to put it mildly, some uh, growing pains in the early going. To name just one, sending Captain America to fight Loki in Germany with only Black Widow and a Quinjet as backup. No shade to Cap, his blue tights, and his enormous biceps, but this was no normal opponent. To quote Black Widow, these guys are basically gods, and Cap ultimately is just a very strong man with like, you know, super steroids. Much to Steve's embarrassment, Iron Man had to step in and save the day, and they ended up playing into Loki's hands anyway, capturing him and bringing him on board the helicarrier just like he wanted. So yeah, while this was an important step on the road to the Avengers becoming a functioning team, we're gonna put it in the bad ideas pile. Luckily, the payoff, as we'll see in our next entry, was well worth it. If you want to talk plans coming together, look no further than the Avengers' response to the Battle of New York. Ultimately, the first Avengers movie wasn't really about Loki or the Chitari or S.H.I.E.L.D. or anything like that. It was about these larger-than-life comic book heroes learning to put aside their differences and their egos and work as a team. And the climax of the movie delivers on that front, with everybody making perfect use of their individual skills as part of a greater whole. Hawkeye snipes from a distance, Thor and Cap punch everything in sight, Iron Man provides air support, Hulk smashes, and Black Widow sneaks up onto the roof and closes the portal. Turns out that Nick Fury's idea was a pretty good one after all. Now, as we'll see in our next century, it's almost a shame that things went so off the rails in Captain America's Civil War, because at the beginning of the movie, Cap's new Avengers lineup was looking pretty sick. 
Unfortunately, that pesky civil war had to rear its head, and one of the less successful Avengers plans was thus born. We're talking about Cap's team, apart from Cap himself and Bucky, getting themselves captured at the end of that iconic airport fight. Did it work at the time? Ah, kinda. But ultimately, it just meant that Cap's few remaining allies got locked up on the raft and spent the next several years as criminals, operating under the radar. A lot of extra stress for not much reward, if you ask us. However, as we said, when the movie begins, things are looking pretty good. Captain America has Wanda impressively well-trained after her evil shenanigans in Age of Ultron. Sam's got his gadgets and his wings, Black Widow's doing her thing. The team is clearly a well-oiled machine, using stealth tactics to weed out Crossbone's various mercenary pals until the guy himself rears his ugly head and then, but oh my God, that is a really ugly head. Oh my goodness. No wonder he was mad. Oh geez, look at that, ugh, gross. Anyway, it's an exciting opening and shows exactly how effective this new Cap-led Avengers lineup could be, with a well-conceived plan executed to perfection. Of course, there was that unfortunate bomb at the end, but you know, nobody could have predicted that. So uh, we're going to call this one a win. Sure, it's our list. We can do whatever we want. Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame are real roller coasters. I mean, not literal roller coasters, but you know, like figuratively. Anyway, uh, showing Earth's mightiest heroes at their absolute highest points and their absolute lowest. Now let's start low, with a plan that nobody seemed to really think through that much, the Battle of Wakanda. Sure, the whole Thanos invasion caught everybody by surprise and he brought a formidable army with him, fair enough. It takes time to formulate an effective response to an attack like that. But just facing his army head on, in a big field, rushing at them and then eventually getting overwhelmed by their serious numbers of what are basically xenomorphs, and having to wait for the admittedly badass arrival of Thor to turn the tide, those master military strategists, Cap and Black Panther, must have been having an off day. That, that's all I'm saying. And moving on to Endgame, after going to all that trouble to travel through time and gather the Infinity Stones again, even losing Black Widow in the process, was it such a great idea to keep them on Earth after using them? Really, the, the second Captain Marvel arrived, somebody should have given her the new Infinity Gauntlet and told her to fly a gazillion light years away, somewhere undetectable. Because the way things actually went down, Thanos very nearly succeeded again, except this time he would have killed everyone in the universe, not just 50% of them. We get it. The Avengers had just brought everybody back and then got a severe pummeling from Thanos. They probably weren't thinking straight after that, but guys, you're in the end game now. Think it through. Now let's forget that near blunder. It was a stressful time for everyone concerned. Mistakes were made. How about we end with a much more audacious and successful plan, arguably the crowning glory of the Avengers plans and the last big scheme we will ever see the original lineup hatch together. We refer, of course, to Hulk turning Ant-Man into a baby. You're right. No, not really. We're we're talking about the time heist. Did we say the word audacious already? Because it's really the only word that fits. Somebody peed my pants. Time travel! Sending the various Avengers back in various different points in history to grab alternate versions of the destroyed Infinity Stones, redo the snap, and bring back 50% of the universe? It was a hell of a scheme. And with a few hiccups, it worked. But most importantly, it was some of the most barnstorming good fun we've ever had at the movies. Of course, these are only the triumphs and failures we've seen in the movies. The Avengers have messed up pretty badly in the comics as well. For example, did you know they once declared war on the X-Men? Like, actual war? Not a great plan, if you ask us. What would General Patton say, guys? Seriously, come on, think about it. 